In this video, we will learn how to create area menus. Area menus are like reporting trees. These contain transaction codes and reports, reports in a tree-based format in which you will have nodes and subnodes, and each node or subnode representing a transaction code or a report. Now, you can use this reporting tree to give access to the users certain functionalities which they would need to perform their day-to-day -day -day jobs. The transaction code for creating an area menu is SC43, or you can also use SC43N. So let's use the transaction code SC43N and hit the Enter key you'll get to the area maintenance, area menu maintenance screen. Let us go and enter our area menu name in which we would like to add the transaction codes and the reports that we would like to give access to. Now, once you create the area menu, you could use, uh, to give access to this area menu, you can do that through a role, but SAP does not in, uh, encouraged to do creating the area menus and then assigning it through a role because whatever format, the tree format that you want to arrange your transaction codes and reports in, you can do that in uh, PFCG now. So let us go and create an area menu. And let's go and create something like Y underscore security area menu. What we'll try to do is in this area menu, we'll try to put in, insert some transaction codes like SC01 and uh, PFCG and some reports like RSUS R002, etc. And then try to build um, a tree structure format uh, so that this, these reports and transaction codes can be arranged in a proper way. So enter the area menu name that you want to create and click on the create icon. So you'll get a pop-up box called uh, create area menu. Uh, enter a description for that area menu. So let's just say in or let's say demo area menu. Then taking So we, we didn't want this, so this was a mistake. So hit the enter key here and we correct it. So you'll get to the edit area menu screen uh, where you can now insert the structure of your area menu. That is that you can insert the transaction codes and the reports that you want to include in this uh, area menu and then arrange it in a proper format, a uh, proper uh, reporting tree format. So in our example, in this video, in, ex in this example, we will create folders and assign transaction codes and reports, uh, etc. in those folders. Now, to start the process of inserting the transaction codes and the reports, select, place the cursor on the the description of the area menu that you entered and click on this icon that is add entry as a sub node icon. When you click on it, you'll get add new entries pop-up window in which you can enter the transaction codes and then you can also enter the reports. So let us go and enter a couple of transaction codes and a couple of reports. So, so let's say you want to enter a 
transaction code called SC01. Hit enter key. And let's set enter another transaction code SC10. And let's say so 53. So whenever you enter a transaction code and hit the enter key, the description of the transaction code comes in the text column, under the text column. Now let us also enter some reports in our uh, in this menu tree. So to insert the reports, let's you click on the reports button on the bottom of the window in the box. So click on the reports button. Now you can select the kind of report that you want to insert. It could be an ABAP query or it could be a normal ABAP report, which is what we're going to use. And you could also include a report writer report kind of transaction codes and reports. So let's go and enter the report name that we want to insert into this tree, uh, in the, into this area menu. So let's enter RS USR002 and then you will need you can also select the kind of GUI support that you could like to provide for executing these reports. So let's select all this and click on the continue button. Now the system automatically generates a transaction code uh, for that report. Now, because if a transaction code is already existing for the report, that is what it's entered here. Otherwise, the, the system will generate a transaction code. So let's go and enter another report and see what happens. So let us go and enter RS param, for example. And let's continue. Now, since RS param does not have an existing transaction code in the system, SAP provided one. The system will ask you to enter a package name so that the transaction code could, could be transported along with the area menu. So let's click on the local object because we are not uh, transporting this thing. Now, if you look, the system generated a transaction code here. And it will always begin with a uh, Y and then you'll have an underscore and then the system ID in system gives some random number to that in the transaction code. And if you also look carefully, the system automatically arranges the transaction codes get that, that gets generated with the reports and the transaction codes. Now let us go and enter a couple of more transaction codes here or another report. So let's go RH and continue. Again, since there is no SAP provided transaction code for that uh, report that we just entered, SAP generates a transaction code by itself. Click on the local object because we are not going to transport it. Now let's go and enter some more uh, transaction code for monitoring purposes. Uh, let's say system monitoring transaction codes like ST22 and SM21. The reason we are trying to enter, we are entering various transaction codes and reports is because to explain how these transaction codes and reports can be arranged in a tree format. After you are done entering all your transaction codes and reports, click on the copy icon. So if you see all the transaction codes and the reports that you entered are, are inserted as subnotes within that area menu. Now, another observation that you can make is that only the descriptions you are visible right now. You cannot see the technical names for each of these descriptions. Now to see or display the technical names, you click on 
additional information and click on transaction code display and off. And now you can see the transaction codes that you had entered in the area menu. Now the next task for us is to arrange these transaction codes and reports in a report tree format. So let us go and create and arrange uh, uh, what we call as uh, folders and arrange these transaction codes in the relevant appropriate folders. So we have different types of transaction codes and reports here. Uh, let's say you have SC01, SC10, and SC53, which are related to security area. Then you have some reports, and then you have some system monitoring transaction codes. So let's create three folders. One for, let's say, one called security administration, other one could be reports. And the third one we could create is system monitoring. So to create a folder, select one of the transaction codes and click on or double click on the transaction code, not click. Now you'll get the transaction pop-up box with the description and the technical name for that uh, transaction code. Now click on to create a folder. To convert that into a folder, that node into a folder, click on as folder button. Say copy. Or you could, at that point of time, you could also change the description to security administration. So double click on the description and you can change the description of that folder. Now if you look, you can see the folder icon here. Now you have some other transaction codes like SU10, which can be which can become part of the security administration folder. So you select the transaction codes and click on this select icon. And then to move SU10 under the security administration folder, now place the cursor on the security administration folder and then click on this icon, which is add entry, oh no, sorry, not this one, reassign icon. So click on reassign icon and you will get a box called reassign node. Now, because you want this transaction code SU10 to be part of the security administration folder, you have to select the lower level radio button so that the SU10 also appears under as a subnode in the security administration folder. So let's go and click on reassign. And if you see, SU10 now is moved under security administration folder. Similarly, you can create uh, the reports folder. So double click on one the, the first report that you want any report and then say click on as folder which will get the menu entry now here you can say reports and say copy so now the arrows per arm transaction which is what you have double clicked on goes under the reports folder now the next Another report that we did was this, but okay, we need to reassign this transaction code in the reports folder. So select this report, click on the select, op select icon, 
then select the folder in which you want under which you want to move that transaction code or report and click on the reassign button so click on the lower level if it is not selected already and say reassign now same thing with other transaction other any other report that you have you do the same thing so click on reassign sorry you have to select the report that you want to move then select the folder under which you want to reassign reassign it to and then click on the reassign button icon on the toolbar select the lower level and reassign so similarly you select this you want to put this under security administration folder click on reassign icon lower level and reassign so let's create a th the third folder and rename it to system monitoring and then select the any other transaction code that you want to be part of that folder and reassign so if you see now we have arranged the reports and the transaction codes in a tree format so we have the folders and then we have we have the transaction codes and the reports under appropriate folders now how do we assign uh, this the access to this area menu to the users that could be done through our role so let's go and create let's go back want to save it say yes if you have not saved it before now the way you can give this access to this area menu is through a role so let's go and go to pfcg we will not go through the entire role building process but uh, we will see how area menus can be used in a role so let's go and create a call very wide test role for area menu so click on create so you can give a description in the whatever you and click on save menus click on the menus and if you look at there is a button on the right under the copies menus box called from area menu click on that so that is how the then you enter the area menu that you want to give access to so double click on the area menu and then you will see a box called selection for transactions from the area menu and then now you can select whatever you want to include in the role whatever portion of the area menu tree that you want to include in the role you can do a custom selection and click on add if you don't want a 
particular report or a transaction code to appear in the mail role, you can deselect it in that box that you have just got. Now the reason you don't need to do use area menus is because you can create these folders within the PFCG role itself, uh, PFCG itself. So if I want to create a new folder, I can create send say HR. Um, let's say common transaction codes, common access, let's say, okay. Click on continue, so you can create a folder. Now, if you want to add a transaction code or a report, you can do that. So, so let's enter SO21, no, sorry, SO21. and assign transaction course button and see if you see it's in the same reporting structure tree format structure so sap whatever you could do in with the area menus you can do within spfcg now so that's why there is no need for uh, creating you see, a separate area menus now after the, you insert all the transaction codes in the reports, you go to the authorizations tab and maintain the authorizations. Now, another way of assigning area menus to the users could be through the roles, uh, sorry, through the user IDs. So let's go to transaction SV01. And let's go and enter a user ID and click on, let's say change. And click on log on data, not log on data, maybe defaults. And here, if it's in the start menu field, you can select the area menu. So what this would do is, so as soon as the user logs in, he will see whatever you have in this area menu. So there's, there's another way of uh, giving access to the users uh, for the area menu that you created. The only issue here in this case is that the structure of that area menu will appear uh, in the as soon as the user logs in instead of the user menu or the SAP menu. And once you enter the area menu name here, click on uh, save icon to save. So that's how you can make use of area menus.